This video demonstration is about topical application of fluoride varnish. Here on my tray, I have displayed various topical fluoride options available in the department. I have a few varnishes on display and here are the two fluoride gels. Among the varnishes, we have the Flow Protector S, which contains ammonium fluoride in a varnish base with ethanol and water as solvents. The disadvantage of a bottle like this one is that on repeated use, when the varnish comes into contact with air, the organic solvents evaporate and the varnish thickens. Thus, a pre-packed unit dose of the same is also available in a vial like this. Hence, the unit doses are more practical to use to avoid wastage of material. Then, we have three options for sodium fluoride varnishes. This one is Floritop SR and this one here is the MI varnish and we have one more option called NT Clear Varnish. So for this video, I've chosen MI Varnish. On opening the seal, you need to mix it well because a lot of times it separates and you need to make sure that you have a good and even mixture. Make sure to get off any excess varnish from your brush because you just want a thin layer over the tooth. Too much of it can make it sticky and the patient will tend to try and remove it off with the tongue before it sets. When it comes to the traditional APF gels, we have these two flavoured options in the department that is orange and strawberry flavour and as you all know, they are applied using fluoride trays. The trays come in three sizes, small, medium and large and based on the child's age and art size, we select the suitable tray. Although, I am not discussing fluoride gel application using trays in this video. Coming to varnish application, the supplies needed are mouth mirror, a tweezer, 2 by 2 inch gauze squares, a suction tip, varnish of your choice and suitable applicator and a cheek retractor. The application and spreading of varnishes on tooth surfaces are usually done with either cotton pellets, applicator tips, small brushes or syringes with or without profile axis of the teeth depending on the manufacturer's instructions or the guidelines followed. Now the ones that evaporate quickly are less viscous or more fluidy and hence is suitable to be applied using an applicator tip. Whereas the MI varnish, Fluoritop and sodium fluoride varnishes which are a little more viscous or thicker are all painted on the tooth using a brush or a cotton pellet. A well-informed patient always cooperates better during the procedure. Hence, you could use Tell Show Do by demonstrating the same on a model prior to the application. Before drying, I usually prefer to use a cheek retractor to keep the tissues away and it's a lot more convenient. But if the patient isn't comfortable with it, alternatively, you can use fingers to raise the lip at the corners of the mouth and then dry the tooth. There are two ways of drying teeth. You can either use a 2 by 2 inch gauze square to dry the surface all around or you could simply use the air water syringe. When using a varnish, always make sure to read the manufacturer's instruction beforehand because some brands say you need to dry the teeth prior to application while some brands say it's not necessary. Once dry, start application without any delay. Now here is a close up of the application technique for better clarity. Take a small amount of varnish on your brush as demonstrated earlier and starting from the margin, brush it down using 2-3 to three strokes to cover the entire surface. The number of strokes may vary depending on the size and location of the tooth. Deciduous or anterior teeth will naturally require fewer strokes than permanent or posterior. Use your finger to act as a fulcrum so that you have stability while applying and that way chances of unwanted application on the lip can be avoided by restricting the movement. You could also bend the neck of the brush to aid in easy application if posterior teeth are not accessible. Do a quick application on the patient starting from the posterior most teeth and then moving forward. It's preferred to keep using the saliva ejector to reduce the pooling of saliva until the application is complete. It is recommended that these conventional fluoride varnishes that has been shown here in this video are applied two to four times per year depending on the objective of application. 
Preventive application requires lesser number of applications per year, while therapeutic reasons like anti-caries effect requires more number of applications. Despite their high concentration of fluoride, these varnishes are considered safe. This may be due to the fast setting nature of the varnish compared to gels, which reduces the amount of fluoride ingested. Additionally, the prolonged contact time between fluoride varnish and enamel leads to slow release of the fluoride. The advanced ones like light curable varnishes have a slow fluoride releasing property allowing their effect to last up to 6 months. Hence, a biannual application may be sufficient when using the light curable variety. Once the application is complete, ask the patient to slowly close the mouth and the saliva will help the varnish harden on the teeth. Also, remember to give specific post-application instructions to the patient which are It is generally recommended that the patient waits for half an hour before eating or drinking anything post-application. There should be no brushing or flossing for 4-6 to six hours. If possible, wait until the next morning to resume brushing and flossing. Also, consume a soft diet for the rest of the day, which means avoid hot, sticky or crunchy food for a minimum of 4 to 6 hours as well. Avoid using products containing alcohol, such as beverages, oral rinses, etc. for the rest of the day.